この柚子のキャラクターって名前あるんですか滝の道柚子。このスコールタウン滝の道。あ、滝の道。滝の道柚子。Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt. We've got an outside the box video for you today. It's something we get asked about a lot, and it's a kind of a fun topic. Yeah, guys, I'm Tim. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with people who love Japanese maples. We're going to be talking about a really fun, interesting topic. We, we have this shown to us constantly, and Matt and I have some firsthand experience with this subject. Guys, today we're going to be talking about Momiji tempura. So, what this is, Are small cookies made from Japanese maples. Now, without fail, every fall, I have a neighbor or a relative or one of my in laws, when it gets into the fall season, they'll tag me in a specific YouTube video that goes viral every fall. And I believe it's by the channel Great Big Story. And they'll send us a video and they'll say, Hey, have you seen this? I know you like Japanese maples. Have you seen this video on Momiji Tempura? And I chuckle every time because not only have we seen it, Tim and I have visited. The exact lady in the video, and we're going to show you some content we filmed with her、uh, previously in Japan. Yeah, I mean, this is super cool.、Uh, if you don't know anything about MrMaple.com, we're a mail order business. We ship directly to your door. Check us out on MrMaple.com. We do over a thousand varieties of Japanese maples. But ma Momiji Tempura, Matt, this, this is pretty awesome. I love Momiji Tempura. Yeah, a couple years ago, Tim and I were on a Japanese TV show, and they flew us to Mino. We went a bunch of places. We got to go see so much. And we may do a full reaction video here where we react to some of that episode because we, really we've never got to share it with so many people. It was this really cool experience. Like 12 million people saw it in Japan. Like it was crazy how many people saw it in Japan, but it didn't air in the United States. And so a lot of our customers, like the people we shipped to, didn't actually get to see it. Coolest thing ever. And one of the fun things we got to do was Momiji tempura. So Mino is a famous area for Momiji tempura, these fried maple leaves. They're a fall delicacy. They happen year round there, but there's a specific walk there in Mino that's particularly famous for Momiji tempura. I think it's so amazing how in the fall, there's so many things in Japan that they just celebrate. Right. And this Momiji tempura is one of those celebrations of fall. I mean, it, it's become a tradition.、Um, and it's crazy how often, I mean, there's lots of people making Momiji tempura. Right. But. The, the lady who we actually filmed with, Setsuko Hesukuni, they've been, her family's been doing it for over 80 years. They've been, they've been making、uh, maple pen,、uh, tempura since 1940. Wow. I mean, that is crazy. Yeah, they've been doing Momiji tempura in Osaka and Mino for over 1,300 years. I mean, it's amazing to see these cookies shaped like maple leaves. Right. It's so cool. We actually have some. I brought some back with me. This was a couple years ago, so you probably wouldn't want to eat these. I don't know how long the shelf life is on them. My <laughs> Japanese、uh, isn't perfect, so I don't know what the、uh, expiration, date expiration date on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and say it wasn't four years ago.、Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. We might open these up some point. We can do a little taste test.、Uh, <laughs> they taste really good. They're kind of like sugar cookies. Like, I really enjoyed making them, and it was a fun experience.、Uh, it was something that Tim and I got to do firsthand. When we flew over, we were on a Japanese TV show called Depot Ni Ikitai. And one of the things we did was go to Mino, which is near Osaka, and kind of practice making Momiji tempura. Yeah, I think this was one of the coolest things. I mean, whenever I think of Mino, I think of the cultivar Mino Yatsubusa as a H. Bergerianum. That's the thing that struck in my mind first. I was like, hey, how is this related? But then when we got to Mino Park and we saw the vendors all the way lined up and down the trail hiking up. To Mino Park, where you can enjoy and see the waterfall. And then many of these vendors are making maple tempura. So I got some shots of that waterfall too, because we enjoyed the heck out of this trip. It was so much fun. We were kids in a candy store. I'll throw some waterfall stuff in and some shots of the Mino Trail that we went up to to that waterfall and the storefronts and some of the wonder of that here and at the end as well.、Uh, amazing time. Let's tell them about the Mamiji tempura. I mean, it was such a fun experience. We got to. Kind of get in front of these big fryers,、uh, and it's all done by hand. Like it's all dipped into these sugars and created right there in person.、Um, it was just such a cool experience. We, we set them out to dry. We kind of have these big chopsticks, kind of as your like spatula. So we're, we're frying them up with these chopsticks and setting the, the leaves that are finished up on the,、uh, the drying area, the little screen there. And、uh, yeah, then they're fresh. Then you take them right out to eat. 
And uh, Tim and I thought it was really cool. I mean, obviously, we like everything Japanese maple related. But actually eating some Japanese maples and, and creating a little sugar cookie out of it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, I mean, as uh, Setsuko Hisakuni is doing this, she's making this look really easy. It's harder. I mean, it's much harder than it looks. She knows what she's doing. She's been doing this for years and years and years. And, I mean, literally, she's just flipping them over, frying them, uh, dropping them in there with that have been soaked in batter. And this batter is really soaked in salt for over, I mean, for a full year almost in just salt to actually just create the shape of the leaf. Yeah, you actually lose any flavor that the leaf had. The salts kind of break down the leaf over time. And we'll get into what type of leaves you pick for this. Now, when we were on Nipponiki Thai, they came to our nursery, they filmed, and essentially it was who wants to go to Japan. And this At, f- the film crew's from Japan. Oh, yeah, so. super fun, guys. And if you know anything about Japanese TV, it can be really campy. So <laughs> we did this whole thing where we had uh, Tim, who's the, already the worst cook on the planet, <laughs> he's gotten better. You're married I, now. You cook I've for your got, wife. I've gotten better at, the at time. this point. It was his bachelor life. He was the worst cook on the planet. Macaroni and cheese. I could handle that. Anything uh, else? I wouldn't eat it. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even. So, so they wanted us to make maple leaves, and they wanted us to kind of screw it up. So it was kind of the joke was that we stunk at it, and we did a really bad job. And so uh, we went inside the Mister Maple Kitchen. Uh, Tim basically just made a pancake and stuck some random japonicum leaves in there. And the guys on the TV show had quite a laugh while Tim basically fried a pancake. With, I think we had like an Acer Japonicum. Ma- a Meiku Jacku, <laughs> right. also known as Akinata Foley. Right. We, yeah. just, we, just made a big, we just made a big burnt pancake with that in it. And then on the TV show, I took a bite out of it and was like, ugh, this, this is terrible. And then the TV show kind of cuts to Tim and I in Mino learning to do this in, you know, the traditional, more correct way. And it was a lot of fun. We had a, we had a big kick out of doing that, and uh, hey, if you're flying me to Japan for free, I'll play along. I'll look as dumb as you want. <laughs> I was like, you can do whatever you want. I was always, I was really afraid being a big guy was going to have like a high-pitched voice, and you know, Japanese TV can get pretty campy. I didn't know if I was going to be like Billy Hilled out a little bit, like <laughs> like Benny Hill, I guess is the name, but I, I didn't know what was going to happen, but it was it, it had some campy elements to it for sure, uh, but we had a lot of fun making Momiji Tempura. We really did. And it was really fun getting to sit down with her and actually go through this process. Uh, but, I mean, they're really frying maple leaves. I mean, and really when they're frying maple leaf, it's not really the leaf that's there. I mean, the leaf has left and has disappeared. And some tips that she told us whenever we were talking to her was that these trees had to have yellow fall color, mm-hmm. that the red leaves had more of a bitter taste to them. Which I thought was really, really interesting. Yeah, the uh, apparently the red leaves didn't create quite the uh, the desired flavor. They kept too much residual flavor during the salting process. Now, at the end of that process, we actually dipped them into like a light sugaring, uh, like compound, and basically after they were fried, the the maple leaf really was just there for shape. I wouldn't say it had too much flavor left over. So Setsuka Hesakuni has this handout that she has that's uh, at her place. And it says, Maple Leaf Tempura is a famous confection that's been produced in the city of Mino uh, in Osaka for over 1,300 years. Made by dipping maple leaves that have changed color in autumn in batter and deep frying them, this treat has a gently sweet flavor. Hisakuni uh, Kusendo has been making the Maple Leaf Tempura since its uh, founding in 1940. We grow a species of maple that produces leaves suitable for human consumption on our own mountain using organic methods. Each fall, we carefully pick the yellow leaves by hand and preserve them in salt for one year. The following year, we remove the leaves from their bed of salt, dip them in a secret batter, and deep fry them in rapeseed oil oil to create a maple leaf tempura. Since the flavor of oil is too strong immediately after frying, we let them sit overnight before selling them in our shop. Since no additives are used in the production process, the product is good for one month from date of production. There we go, Matt. Right. So that, that's <laughs> four, already, four years. The, once you read the ingredients down uh, here, the, we got a little bit of the secret sauce right here. So the ingredients are wheat flour, sugar, sesame seeds, vegetable oil, which in parentheses it says rapeseed oil, and maple leaves. Yeah. Now, they're obviously, the, uh, the dip and batter we put in there is very sugar cookie-like. It was a sweet substance. Kind of improves the flavor of it. I had some teas when I was in Japan that were flavored with maple leaves. Not my favorite thing. Tasted pretty terrible. <laughs> the maple the maple flavored tea was not so good. Uh, yeah, it wasn't my favorite thing. Now this has an excellent flavor. It's really nice. 
They're crispy. They're crunchy. They have a little bit of salty sugar on the outside. And uh, it was a really fun process. We got to go in here and dip these into kind of the, you know, the little fryer there and kind of get things going. Tim and I actually did a few uh, with her for the TV show. So we actually sat down and dipped a few in there ourselves just to kind of get some practice at it. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that was cool is she actually told us that the cultivar they were using was Ichi Gyoki, which is, I believe, is different than the Ichi Gyoji that's in the United States. Yeah, I haven't seen too many of the Ichi Gyoji in the United States that are actually a true yellow in the fall. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be more orange. Her cultivar, she has a little grove we'll get to here in a second, and they were distinctly yellow. They were distinctly yellow fall color. Um, so I think the true form of Ichi Gyoji would work great for this. Uh, a couple ideas we also had was like Rikuzen Shidari. You've got a big leaf. Uh, it has a distinctly yellow fall color. Now, you know, I'd have to trial some of these. I've, certainly she has the recipe down to a science here for the perfect trees. Uh, and I, I think one of the American cultivars that would translate really well to this would be Green Star. Yeah, I think so too. Rikuzen Shidari and Green Star. Rikuzen Shidari, someone could grow on their back porch in a container. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice weeping habit. Green Star is more of an upright. Um, both are going to have that large leaf, mm -hmm. but then go to yellow. And again, remember, she lets them go to yellow fall color and then collects them. Yeah. Which you can't really, really do them when they're like ripe, fresh off the tree. They have to get to more of that fall color. You know, that's when they're ready to be broken down by the salts. And she said they had to have a very soft veining. That was something I remember that, that she mentioned that if the ones that had very strong veining might have too much, probably flavor buildup around those veins too. So peaches and cream may have a yellow fall color, but the veining may be too strong. I, I don't know. This is something you'd have to try. And, and, and you, could, you can make the peach flavored peaches and cream fried <laughs> maybe tempura. So uh, yeah, we kind of have these little chopsticks that we use to flip the trees, the, the leaves over with in, in the, uh, the oil while we're frying. And this thing is hot as Hades. So it looks easy in the pictures, but I mean, this thing is, uh, you feel the heat when you're sitting near this. So, uh, she has like aluminum foil and some things to keep the uh, the heat away from her legs, but it's pretty hot when we were in there. I remember the feeling of it being close to it. It was, you know, this thing's popping. It it really was, and it it's one of those things where you see this happening and you're like, wow, this is amazing. And here in this photo, here you actually start to see the Ichi Gyoji hill that she has that are just in bright bright yellow fall color. That she's showing these are where the leaves came from. This is uh, some of the actual fried maple tempura that's already sat a day yeah. that's for sale here at the shop. And that just lets everything settle down a little bit. Here's our uh, our box here. As you can see, we got them. Uh, let's get some prices on there. So if you want to order some uh, Momiji tempura, I, I think if you're in Mino, it's a must. They had different types of cookies. There are all kinds of maple-related products as you get on the street. This is actually has a shot of some of the guys in the film crew there, you know, getting her sign and everything. And there are multiple shops down through the road that sell Momiji tempura and maple related products there's some maples down through here in fall color this is a screenshot from the tv show uh nipo niki tai of a close-up of one of her yellow leaves before she starts now this is actually that grove there of yellow fall color now this is a a selected field of these that has you know been passed down her family that is selected specifically for perfect yellow fall color and for making momiji tempura so things to take into mind not only are you looking for yellow fall color, but you're looking for a leaf large enough to have some substance. Like like Sengu Kaku might work, but you're going to get a very small leaf. Might not really make much of a, of a cookie. And she takes them, dips them in the batter again, and then drops them into... And when she's dropping them into the batter here, this is the sugars. Yeah. This, this part is, was harder than I thought. Like, it was hard to get enough stuff on it. it, it I know was. we did several that we dropped in that were just like... You know, they were too crispy. They didn't get enough of the good stuff. <laughs> And there again, there's her grove. She, she, Setsuki Hesukuni is probably the most famous person doing this. And then she may have, her family may have actually originated some of this. Her I shop mean, got the most hits. There was a line. People were showing up constantly. There were several different places you could try this. I definitely recommend if you're in Mino, which is near Osaka, as part of Osaka, go and buy and visit her. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, it's a historic piece of Japanese maples that I think is really interesting. You know, we don't think about maples being edible. We don't think about Japanese maples being something that we consume as a product. But it's kind of cool to see them this way. And and recently, this this whole area had changed mascots. It used to be a uh, a monkey, a macaque, and they'd recently changed it to this little orange figure with the uh, the maple leaves. And uh, it was just interesting. We really enjoyed going around, 
seeing all the different maple products, like it's kind of just a celebration of Japanese maples at this point. There are maple cookies. There's maple art. There are all aspects as you go down through here of, uh, you know, different types of cookies and tapestries, uh, all kinds of different uh, textures that you could buy that had Japanese maples on them. And of course we brought some of these home. I think, I think the one's actually on screen right now. I actually own those. Those are in our office, but there were all kinds of different, you know, basically like banners and different pieces of tapestry you could buy of cloth that had Japanese maple prints on. It's just celebrating, celebrating maples. And one of the crazy things when we were talking with Satsuki Hisakuni is that her daughter and her son-in-law or her son and daughter-in-law lived in Florida at this time. Yeah, yeah. And they were so, super nice. They reached out to us one time, and uh, I guess they'd saw the episode we were on of Nippo Nikki Tai with her, and they were really excited uh, to talk to us. They reached out to us and were just like, hey, thanks for uh, doing this with her mom. Yeah, I mean, so, so fun. And again, she is so talented when it comes to doing this. She makes it look easy, but it's not. It's not easy at all. <laughs> we screwed it up there. Like They tried to teach us how to do it and then let us show that we were experts at it. I would say the hardest part of the whole thing was getting the breading right and getting it into the batter with the proper and, amount of the sugar content on it. And if you notice, she dips it. She drops one in, it sinks to the bottom, fries, right. and then raises up to the top. Then she flips it. Then she flips it. And so you see that one she just dropped. It's all the way on the bottom. And then you've seen it rise up to the top right here. And then she's going to let it sit at the top for a little while, then flip it. I mean, she's got this down to a science. And the temperature and everything are so important. You've got to have the, everything right at the right setting so that, that that leaf is frying, it's raising back up. It's crisping up to the right amount because I think we burn a few as well. <laughs> we, didn't really, we didn't really master this as, as well as we could have, but we had such a fun time screwing it up. It was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed eating Japanese maples. I enjoyed that there was a cookie, and I think it's just something everybody reacts to. It's like, have you seen that people make a dessert out of Japanese maples. I mean, if you're a Japanese maple fanatic like we are, it's just a cool thing. Like, how cool is that? And when we're dealing with this, again, there's not much of the leaf left after a year soaking in the salts. I yeah. mean, there's the residue of the leaf that's shaped of the leaf. Right. But, you know, once you add the salts and then you dip it in batter, you're really not tasting much of the leaf itself. It's it really more just retains the shape. Retains the shape. And then so you're enjoying the beauty of the maple leaf rather than the actual leaf taste of the maple leaf. I love to send people this once they've tagged me in the great big story. Uh, and again, everybody, I've, all my family and my in-laws and everybody have sent this to me and neighbors. And they say, hey, have you seen this? And I love to send them a picture of Tim and, and the picture at the beginning of the video with Tim and I with her. And she's holding up the Mr. Maple shirt because we gave these out, the I Dig Japanese Maple t-shirts when we were in Japan as a gift. And she was so sweet and welcoming, and it was just a fun time. I think that video, the Great Big Store video, has like 1.2 million views. So she certainly went pretty viral. Uh, it's something that, that gets shared every single year. And, uh, hey, we were involved in it, too. It's kind of cool that we actually got to go and do this in person. It's something I'll always remember. And uh, it, was a, it was a really fun time. Yeah, I mean, that is for certain. I mean, she's such a sweet lady, and it's crazy that – she might be out there sometime in Mino Park wearing the Mr. Maple t-shirt, I dig <laughs> Japanese maples, making maple tempura. So walking through Mino, there were a lot of really cool plants and Japanese maples in fall color. Tim and I were really enjoying ourselves walking through the Mino Trail area because there's so many different maple-related products. There's a beautiful stream next door. Uh, we didn't see any of the macaques that it's famous for. I think they'd kind of recently cleaned that area up a little bit for the macaques and taken them out of there. So we didn't see a lot of the monkeys that had previously made this air, this region really famous. Uh, but we did see so many cool Japanese maples in fall color. I mean, the, the trees were beautiful as we were hiking through here. There are maple leaves on everything. Everything's kind of adorned with the beauty of Japanese maples. One of the things I thought was really interesting is that these trails in Japan are paved roads. Yeah. And then they've developed restaurants and lots of vendors up and down the trails mm -hmm. that are paved roads all the way up. And you're walking by a river, you're t walking by wild Japanese maples out in the wild in fall color. Mm -hmm. But then you've got it commercial as well on a paved trail. Now, this trail eventually leads to a gorgeous waterfall at kind of the top of the mountain. So uh, when we were on the TV show, we hiked up this trail and enjoyed all the fun delicacies and food and street vendor food that was up this road. And eventually we got up to this beautiful waterfall that was kind of at the pinnacle of the area. 
And it reminded me a lot of the mountains of Western North Carolina, but with Japanese maples growing natively. There was a gorgeous waterfall, big rock face, and it was just a beautiful area. We, we actually uh, had such a blast there with the film crew. Those guys were so interesting. We really made good friends with the film crew over the time when we were filming. And, and our translator, Ace K, uh, you know, we might see him on some upcoming things too. And a lot of people here were all enjoying the maples in fall color and the waterfall. I mean, it reminded me so much of Western North Carolina and what we love about here and why so many people come to visit. But this is in Japan with Japanese maples growing natively there in the wild. I mean, what a way to chill, right? If you're going to chill, get some good food, get some beauty, get some waterfalls going on, and some Japanese maples in fall color. When you got all those things in a combination, you know, you've got a perfect setting for a lot of fun. And uh, I just appreciate the culture that, that recognizes this beauty and enjoys it and celebrates it with these type festivals. And Mino can get quite busy. So if you get to Mino during, you know, the Momiji season, especially the fall color, they call it Momiji Gare, the maple watchers, when you go out and check out the maples in fall color or the maple hunters. And you go through and you enjoy fall color. And, you know, it's always awesome when you get some cookies and a waterfall thrown in there. <laughs> that, it, it's such a fun trip to Japan. This was one of our highlights. We had a lot of different highlights on this specific trip. But getting to see the fall color, getting to make maple tempura, and getting to enjoy this beautiful waterfall all in one day, I mean, it was really a little bit of an overload. I mean, there's so many awesome things all at once, and it was all amazing. Yeah, it was a fun time. Didn't see too many monkeys that trip. Uh, One thing I love about Osaka and I loved about Japan are the manhole covers. I know this is a little weird side note, but all the manhole covers are super cool. Like, they're decorated. Each, yeah, each town kind of has their own individually handcrafted manhole covers that uh, that are just kind of a little piece of art. Like, you know, you think about walking over manhole cover, whoop de doo it's, it's, a, it's a sewer, right? right. I mean, it's, it's what people don't yeah. pay attention to at all. Each one, like this one represented the waterfall there. There's always like maple leaves. They're colorful. They have different designs on them. And it's just something cool and extra when you're walking around. I found myself in Japan taking pictures of the manhole covers everywhere. Now, when we were on the TV show, they ask us constantly to react to stuff. <laughs> so me and Tim would constantly be drinking Boss, which is this local coffee there in Japan. Uh, they have like uh, Tommy Lee Jones as the spokesman. He's like smoke cigars and he's a boss, which is funny. But it's it's these little coffees they serve in these little shot cups. This time we didn't have any, so we had to take like this Pepsi shot because the main thing they wanted was Tim and I like – really excited and really fired up because we, you know, we don't speak fluent Japanese. So a lot of it was reacting to our faces and getting excited about these amazing shots of temples and Japanese maples in fall color. And so Tim and I just had a blast exploring this area. And it's crazy too. Some of the vending machines you'll walk up on that has these coffee, they'll just be on the side of the road. There won't be anything else around them and somehow they'll have power and they'll be having cold coffee (laughs) and hot coffee in the same machine. I've walked up to vending machines that you could just mash a button on and it's it like put you out like like a full a full hot meal. <laughs> it's like we're just, this is amazing, uh, amazing stuff. And that waterfall was a lot of fun, and we'd really enjoyed just getting through the area there, getting to explore Mino, um, just having a fun experience with the whole thing, and. And the beauty. I remember that that river that came through there was so crystal clear. It was so beautiful, and uh, I don't I don't think we have enough footage to do it justice. I mean, we were we were definitely more amateur cameramen than we are now. Maybe one day we'll take our crew back to Japan, film some cool uh, content for you there while we're around Japan. But uh, Tim and I tried to do our best back in the day. We're going to be doing some upcoming videos where we talk to you about not only our our time in Japan, but also uh, some of our favorite plants that we experienced in Japan, like the Nakakomoto Weepin. So if you like this kind of reactionary content or this explaining content where Tim and I are kind of post-traveling there with you, we may even do some of it live. So Mino is in the Osaka region, and we left there and went directly to Osaka, with the city. And, I mean, that is a very different city. I mean, Osaka is so different than everywhere else in Japan. Like, our, our camera guy kept telling us, like, Osaka's really crazy like the whole time, like Osaka is really wild and I didn't understand. And so like everywhere we went in Japan, you know, I stand out like a sore thumb and so is Tim. Like I'm this six, three guy with a beard, kind of chubby. Look, I look pretty odd. I stand out like a sore thumb everywhere I go. And I was always trying to be quiet and reserved to be respectful. And, uh, it's the exact opposite in, in Osaka. Everybody in Osaka is super loud. They're blinking lights. 
It's like uh, it, Las Vegas and Asheville and New Orleans all rolled into one. Everybody's super nice everywhere you go in Japan. Everywhere you go, they're super nice. Right. But in everywhere else in the country, they will look down at the ground as they're walking. They won't look at you. More quiet we, and reserved, Which sure. is unusual because we're Southerners, and we walk by people. We look them in the eye, and we say, howdy, how are you doing? <laughs> right. I mean, that's well, just what you do down here in the South. Everybody but, in Osaka is loud and boisterous is what we found. And, now, one thing we did in Osaka is they took us out to some famous places to try okonomiyaki, which is essentially a octopus pancake with, like, a mayo on it. It's really Really good. This was some of the time we had in Osaka with the film crew. Uh, this was actually out of our hotel in Osaka. We took uh, a really crowded train to get there. Here's a shot of one of those um, uh, vending machines Tim was talking about. This was just some drinks so not really a true vending machine, but it had a lot of different options. We went through those crowded streets there in Osaka, which, as you know, the, if you've ever seen Osaka, the open air uh, doorways, but you get into these crowded like inner parts of the mall. I mean, it really feels almost like a New York City, Las Vegas, bright oh, lights wild. everywhere. And, and uh, we went and we actually kind of create our own. These are some of the guys from the film crew explaining to us what we're making. And uh, we, we had a good time. Uh, we really kind of created these little pancakes. It's a, uh, a octopus-flavored pancake. Here, here's a terrible job of me showing you how to flip this over. I didn't do a very good job of this. It kind of crushes. But they uh, she cleaned it up and made it look better for me. So you basically, you fry this pancake at your table. You wait for the right moment, and then you flip it. And then you mess it up like that. <laughs> but they were delicious. Luckily, it all still tastes great, whether you flip it perfect or not. And then you kind of cover it in the sweet sauce and some mayo, and you throw some onion petals on there that kind of move around. And, man, is that good. I I'm telling you, I would go back to Osaka just for the okonomiyaki. Tim and I fully approve, uh, and we had a blast on this TV show creating it. I hope you like this little look we did at Momiji Tempura and a little bit of our travel in Japan. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, let us know in the comments. I would love to show you some of our travels to Western Bird Arboretum with Peter Gregory, to Friar Park. We didn't get in, but we got to go look at it. And then some of our time in Japan. There's a lot we could talk about with Japan. See, Matt and I, we've traveled, traveled we've driven over 3,000 miles ourselves in Japan. Twice. And yeah, and then after getting on this TV show, we took off in our car afterwards right. and drove again. So we've spent a lot of time in Japan traveling. We've got some good footage, some good uh, photos, and some really cool experiences we'd love to share with you. If you'd like to see more of this type of, comment, uh, type of content, comment in the comment section. Let us know because we can definitely put out a lot more content about some of our travels to Japan. And I think if you, know, if you like that, we'll definitely work hard at putting more of this content out there for y'all. Guys, we put out seven days a week, normal Japanese maple content and other plant-related content. If you think we've earned it from watching this video, give us a sub. If you made it this late in the video, hey, you've already liked it. So you might as well go ahead and sub to our channel. And for all of our regulars, guys, we appreciate you in that chat. We premiere these videos so that live chat is always a lot of fun. They premiere every day at 9 a.m., so it's a fun time to get involved. Uh, we appreciate our regular people. They're always saying smash that like button. They're always liking and sharing our videos. And we really appreciate you guys being part of that community. Uh, definitely sign up to get notified when we add new video content. It's every single day, seven days a week. And on Sundays, we drop an amazing new podcast on Japanese maples. So you want to be part of that. That airs Sundays at 8 on YouTube and on all your favorite podcast platforms. And if you're really enjoying us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our weekly emails on MrMaple.com. We had 10 new trees Every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do over 1,400 different varieties of Japanese maples. We ship directly to your door. So make sure you sign up and shop with us on MrMaple.com. We'd really appreciate it. Hey, if you really love this, maybe we'll do a short of some of our employees and us reacting to eating this old cookies. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, take care. God bless. And have a great day.